slide it down like that. Then the warp threads sit on top and they don't get stuck in anything. I like that. So, now it's important to thread from your cross. When you spread your warp, it's really important that you focus in the right area. If I am to look way up here at the threads as they sit on the paper, I can't see anything. If I look here, I don't see much. But if I focus right between the two leaf sticks, I can see the cross as it was, as it was created on the warping board or the warping mill, and the threads just pop off. So I'm looking there, I get my first two threads. I grab them and I put them in the first section of the rattle. Here we come with the next set. Pop it in. Both have to go on the same side. When you do this with this rattle, it's wonderful because you get to do the whole thing standing up. So many other rattles are inserted into the beater at the front of the loom and it means that the weaver has to go from the back to the front or bend over like this through the whole thing, breaking your back, trying to see your cross. I love this because I can stand straight. I never have to hurt myself getting my warp spread out and I also get to spread it out perfectly. This rattle allows you to work beautifully with fine threads, with most threads. Sometimes big fat threads are a problem for it and that's when you might want to choose the other method of warping which is front to back. I generally warp back to front for everything that's smooth and fine like this and reserve that other method of warping front to back for sticky things. Anyway, we can progress through here quite quickly. It's a cinch. I'm going to go on like this until I've got about four inches worth of threads. You can see how quickly it goes. Everything flies off the paper. You can see your cross so easily. When I've got four inches done, I'm going to leave a space to accommodate all that metric stuff. And then carry on again. If you were working 20 ends per inch, you'd put four threads in here. Just do the math and figure it out. One thing I warn against is if you've warped with multiple threads. Supposing you've made a warp and you've got three threads in your hands because you have three cones of, say, white cotton. So that'll make it all go quickly. But then you end up with three threads. It's 20 ends per inch. Hmm, how can I spread that out in here evenly? I would never split a thread group. If you've warped with three threads and you want to put two or four in each one, never take one out of one group and put it into another group. When you've made your warp and those threads are all coming off of their spools together, a slight subtle amount of twist has gone into those threads, into that warp, that group of warp threads. That's all sitting on the other side of the loom and eventually it has to pass through the rattle. So if you break them up, one will want to go one way, one has to go around the other way, and you end up with snapped threads. So in that case, I would put three in one part of the rattle and six in the other part of the rattle at the very end, just to accommodate all my threads. Always remember what your rattle's for. Your rattle is just to assist you winding your warp on at the appropriate width. Doesn't matter if it's half an inch too wide or half an inch narrower, won't make any difference to your weaving. It doesn't create pattern. It just assists you in winding your warp on at the appropriate width. So we're almost at four inches now. Three and a half. I'll put in a couple more. Then I'm going to leave a space. One more. It's perfect. All right, there's our four inches right there, and you can see that we have sort of our extra slot right here. So we're going to leave it empty, get our next two threads, and there, we've bought
bypassed it. And we continue on just like we were before. And now our math will all work out. So, you don't need to watch me do this whole thing. I'll come back in a couple minutes. It'll be all ready. And you'll say, oh my goodness, a shiver fast. <laughs> We're back, and it's almost done. Just a few more to put in. And we're going to check to make sure that it's 14 inches wide or close. Close counts. There we go. And our measuring tape. Look at that. Hecky do. It's 14. Right on. So that's good. Now, whoops, I'm not going to put that there. I'm going to throw that there. We need to somehow anchor this so that these threads don't go flying out. You know, your cat runs across the room and drags your warp with it, and then they're all gone. So we don't want that to happen. My kids have all pulled them out over the years. They'll never do it again. <laughs> all right. This piece of string is just going to come around here, attach there, we'll tie it in a nice bow, and then our warp threads can't escape. Your cat can charge through the room if it wants to. I won't be able to pull these out. There. So that's hanging there. I'm going to just pop this up here and get it out of the way. Now I'm going to go and get a long piece of cord to lash between the rod that's holding the warp, our warp rod, and our apron rod. The length of this lashing cord um, depends on how wide